Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you for clicking. My name is Juan. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make this shirt. Let's get straight to the measurement. So I have my across back to be 17 inches. My sleeve length is 8 inches. The round sleeve is 13 inches. The shirt circumference is 38 and the shirt length is 30 inches. Okay guys, so these are my materials. I, I'll be using two yards of Ankara fabric, a plain fabric, measuring tape, a piece of chalk, and then a pair of scissors. The plain fabric is going to be used as the designs on it. So guys, unfold like this. What you need to consider to fold this is your chest circumference. Divide that by four and add two inches seam allowance. So that's what I got. I have 12 inches on fold like this. Okay, now let's go to the length of the shirt. Now the length of the shirt is 30 inches. We are going to add 4 inches. That is 2 inches for the hem allowance and then 2 inches for the shoulder slope that you normally add to the shirt. In other words, the shirt, I mean the back part of the shirt should be 2 inches longer than that of the front part of the shirt. So this is the back part of the shirt that we are cutting. So the 30 inches plus the 4 inches makes 34 inches. So that's exactly what I'm marking. So after marking, straight it out and then cut that out. Now after cutting the back part of the shirt, go ahead and then cut out the yoke for the back part of the shirt. The yoke that is normally at the back of the shirt. So we are going to take the same measurement for the weight and then the length for this is 9 inches but it depends on the shape that you are going to give it to the yoke. If you want to make it rectangular, triangular or any shape that you want to make for the back part of the shirt, you consider that to cut the length as well. So guys, let's go to the front part of the shirt. Now the front part of the shirt, you consider the same measurement that of the back part of the shirt to cut that. So that's 12 inches. Now let's come to the length. The length, you add 2 inches hemming allowance to the full length of the shirt, which is 30 inches. So the front part of the shirt will be having the length to be 32 inches. Like I told you earlier on, the back part of the shirt should be 2 inches longer than that of the front part of the shirt. So we have 32 for the front and 34 for the back part of the shirt. So that's what I'm cutting out. So guys, I went ahead and then placed the front part of the shirt on top of the back part of the shirt just as seen. So that's the 2 inches... Um, extra allowance that we added to the back part you can see it making the back part longer than that of the front part let's come to the neckline i'll mark two and a half inches like this on the front part of the shirt and go down by two and a half inches so i should be having a square shape like this i'll then ahead go go on and then mark that of the back part of the shirt neckline i'm going to be marking on the front part of the shirt so I'll go down by one and a half inches and then maintain the width of the two and a half. So I kept that of the front part of the shirt and then kept that of the back part of the shirt. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. If you are not understanding me, just follow the steps that I'm taking I mean, or watch the video and then you understand what I'm trying to say. I went down by two centimeters on the other side to cut the shoulder slope. And I connected it to the neckline like so. I went up by 2 centimeters. You can go down by 1 inch. It depends on you. And then connect that to the neckline. So after doing so, I'll go ahead and cut that of the back neckline first. I'll cut that of the back neckline like this. And then separate the front part of the shirt like this and cut that of the neckline as well. So this is how it should turn out. After that, cut out the shoulder slope. So this is it. So guys, bring out the yoke for the back and then the back part of the shirt. And then place the yoke under the back part of the shirt as I'm doing. 
like this and then use the back part of the shirt to cut the neckline for the yoke for the back part of the shirt use the front part of the shirt to cut the neckline and then the shoulder slope for the yoke so that is it so after achieving the yoke the shape and the needs of the yoke like this depends on you you can make it rectangular or triangular a circle or any shape that you prefer that's why i said earlier that how you shape it depends on the length that you might i mean you may take so i'm making the triangular shape i went ahead and marked two centimeters at the end like this and connected to connected it to the center of the yoke as seen so i cut that out I'll go ahead and cut that out. The shape absolutely depends on what you want to make. So this is how it came out. So I'll go ahead and then apply my um, gum stay on that like this. With the shining parts facing the fabric and then I flat iron it to make it stick on it. Okay, guys, so this is how it is. So I'll go ahead and then fold in the shape. I'll go ahead and fold in the shape. So this is how I'm going to be folding in the shape. This is how I'm going to be folding in the shape like so. I fold in and then press onion it. Okay, so our yoke is ready. I'll bring out that of my back part of the shirt. So this is how the yoke is going to be placed on the back part of the shirt. I'll place it on the back part of the shirt like this. But before then, we are going to join the necklines together. So I will make sure I place it this way with the right side of the yoke facing the wrong side of the back part of the shirt. With the right side of the yoke facing the wrong part of the shirt and then join the shoulders with half of an inch so guys this is it after joining the shoulders with half of an inch after that i went ahead and then gave them some notches to be able to make it um neat after turning it to the right side so this is how it is this is how it looks like so make sure you iron it to straighten the neckline like so Make sure you iron it to straighten the neckline. So guys, first of all, I'll take this to the same machine and then top stitch the folding on the yoke part of the shirt with half of an inch all the way down. So this is how it came out. This is how it came out. This is how it came out after top stitching the folding on the yoke. So after this, I'll go ahead and pin this down. I'll go ahead and then pin this down and then top stitch the yoke to to join the back part of the shirt. But before then, I'm just adding a folded in triangular shape like this just to make it uh, more beautiful at the back. It's just a shape. It's optional. You can just ignore this. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this down and then join the back part of the shirt. I mean, join the yoke to the back part of the shirt. Okay guys, so this is the front part of the shirt. So I'll go ahead and use the bias to pipe the neckline like so. Or you can go ahead and then cut the plain fabric that you'll be using to make the design. You cut at least one inch or so and then use it to pipe the neck. So this is how I'm going to be piping the neck like so.
So guys, after joining the bias to the to the neckline, go ahead and then give it some notches before you turn it over to continue with the piping. All right, guys, so we earlier attached the bias to the wrong side of the shed. So we are going to fold in like this and then top stitch this to the right side of the shed. You are going to fold in like what I'm doing and then top stitch it on the right side of the shed. Make sure you fold in um, the seam of the neckline. It shouldn't be appearing outside to make this your piping come out neatly. So guys, this is how we came out after piping the neckline for the front part of the shirt. So we are going to attach the plain fabric to this. So I'm going to bring out my plain fabric like this. So unfold, we have four inches, four inches unfold, and then we have 26 inches for the length of the design that you're going to be making. So the design is going to, what we are going to attach to the shirt is going to stop somewhere around um, where I showed you. So I went ahead and attached my hair stay or my gum stay to about 13 inches, to about 13 inches or the half part of the, um, of the plain fabric like so. So I'm going to take to the same machine and then stitch this all the way down, closing one end of the of the design like so so i'm just trimming off the excess of the seam allowance on the sides of the plain fabric and then turn it to the right side of the plain fabric so guys before i turned it out to the right side i just gave it some notches before turning it out So after I turned it out, I went ahead and then flat iron it like so. Okay guys, so after that is done, I'll bring out the front part of my shirt like this. And then I'm going to be attaching the plain fabric design on it like so. Alright, so like this, I'll be pinning this to the front part of the shirt. You can see the other edge is being joined or it's closed so i'll come down for my shoulder line like seven and a half inches as shown i'll come down for my shoulder line like seven and a half inches like shown so this is how the design is going to be like i folded it this way this is how it's going to be like so this is how i'm going to sewing down on the shirt this is how i'll be showing it down on the shirt first of all i'm pinning it to the shirt I'll pin it down before I take it to the same machine and then stitch it down to join the shirt. So like I said, this is how I'm going to be top stitching it like this to join it to the shirt, to create the shape on the shirt. So guys, this is how it turned out. This is how it turned out. And then you fold the other end like this and then flat iron it to make the design pop out okay guys so after this is done we'll be attaching our back part of the shirt like this so place the back part of the shirt on the front part with the right side of both of them facing each other and then join the shoulders like this you can choose to pin one of the shoulders so that you can be able to fix your zipper later on or you can just stitch it just after that and then later take out this um the stitches so this is how we came out after joining the shoulders this is how we came out after joining the shoulders so now we are going to be taking out our shoulder to shoulder measurement or the across back of the shirt 
Okay, guys, so now for the cross back or the shoulder to shoulder measurement of this shirt, it is 17 inches. I'll go ahead and add one inch seam allowance to it to be able to join the sleeves to this. Now, the 17 inches, after adding the one inch, it turns out to be 18 like this. So go ahead and count the remainder of what is left. So I have six inches remainder. Divide that by two and then share it three inches to the one end of the shoulder and then three inches the other end of the shoulder so that's what i've marked three inches for both ends of the shoulders and this will be the armhole weight for both ends of the shirt after that i'll go to the armhole depth i'll go down by eight inches like this for the armhole depth i'll go down by eight inches like this and join the armhole weight to it I'll do same for the other side. I'll go down by 8 inches for the armhole depth. I'll go down by 8 inches for the armhole depth like so. And then join the 3 inches armhole width. After that, I'll go ahead and then curve this. Go up like 2 inches and then curve this. I'll do same for the other side of the shirt as well. After that, I'll go ahead and then cut that out. So guys, remember the um, the shirt circumference is 38 inches, so that divided by 2 will give us 19 inches. So add like 3 inches seam allowance to this and then trim off the excess of the allowance that is left. Normally, the shirt the male shirt does not have um that much of seam allowance so trim off the SS. so i had like two inches extra um allowance on this so i trimmed off one inch on both sides of the shirt so i also went ahead and then notched the shoulders of this shirt to mark the center where we'll be placing our sleeves on so guys i'm about to fix my zipper just as i said so you just have to take out the stitches and then fix that of your zipper so this is it after taking out the um the stitches from the sh one shoulder you can choose any of the shoulders that you want you can choose this side or here so i'm going to be fixing my zipper like this with with a quarter of an inch or the zipper line showing so this is it after i faced my zipper i trimmed off the excess of the zipper as well so this is it now we are about to attach our sleeve to the shirt we are about to attach our sleeve to the shirt let's get to the sleeve so guys um i have my sleeve on four eight and a half inches i'll be giving the detail tutorial on this sleeve very soon so eight and a half on four i'll go down to the length to be nine inches the sleeve length is eight inches but then i will add one inch seam allowance to this to make it nine inches and mark it out and then mark it out and then i'll go ahead and cut that out and use the same piece to cut another another piece of the sleeve so guys i have two pieces of the sleeve now so i have the length to be nine inches and then the width to be nine and a half inches so i went ahead and cut um that of the plain fabric with a length of two and a half inches sorry with a width of two and a half inches and then the length to be the same length as that of the sleeve so I'll go ahead and place them on each other like this with the right side facing each other and join it together. So this is how it came out. This is how it came out. I went ahead and then flat iron it first. Now, after being able to attach the Ankara fabric to that of the shirt, fold in like half inch and then flat iron it just as I'm doing. And then fold in again like this and turn it to the right side of the plain fabric and leave like point one of the Ankara fabric showing at the end of the sleeve leave like point one inch 
of the Ankara fabric showing at the end of the sleeve. This is how the design is made. This is very simple. Follow the steps and you'll be able to make this. Flat iron it to make the Ankara fabric pop out like 0.1 inch of the um sorry at the end of the sleeve. So do same for the other side of the sleeve. So this is how it should look like in the inside this is how it looks like and then that's how it's shown at the outside of the sleeve so i went down to the same machine and then stitch it down i went down to the same machine and then stitch it down so after achieving this i'm going to be cutting that of um, the armhole on the sleeve now the around or the round sleeve is 13 inches so that divided by two gives us six and a half inches so i'll mark that out here six and a half inches like this and then after marking the six and a half inches go ahead and then add one and a half seam allowance to the round sleeve measurement of the sleeve now for the top part we are going to bring out our shirt and then measure the armhole to be able or to use that to cut that of the armhole on the sleeve so we had nine and a half inches for the armhole we had nine and a half inches for the armhole so that is what you are going to be using to mark that out on the sleeve so this is how i just try to measure it on the sleeve before you you give her the cap shape so i went in by three inches then i went down by three inches as well so like this i'm going to connect it together so she will be having like an um something like s shape like this after that join the tip to the seam allowance on the sleeve like this and then cut that out and then cut that out now use this to cut the same for the other side of the sleeve now fold the both sleeves like this and then give it a notch at the tip like this so guys if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel please subscribe like this video leave a comment in the comment section on whatever part of the video that you didn't understand and then share this video to your friends and family so remember the notch that we made at the shoulders at the shoulder area we are going to match that out with that on the sleeve and pin it down then take it to the same machine and join the sleeve to the armhole just look at how i'm placing them together that's exactly how you should do it and then stitch it or join them together and join the sleeve to the armhole so guys go ahead and then do same for the other side of the armhole and the sleeve to join them together So guys, this is how it came out after joining the sleeve to the armhole of the shirt. This is how it came out. We are almost done with this. Okay guys, so I'm going to turn it to the wrong side to join the sides of the shirt. You see how our sleeve is popping out? Turn it to the wrong side to be able to join the sides of the shirt. So guys, this shirt has slit at the sides of the shirt. So I'll go down. Now from the down part, I'll come up like 8 inches like this. I'll come up like 8 inches on both sides of the shirt. So that is where our joinings on the side should stop. I'll go ahead and then do the same for the other side of the shirt as well. now i'll go ahead and then mark that of my round sleeve measurement which is 13 divided by 2 that is six and a half 
on the sleeve again like this and then connect it to the side seam to join both of that together so remember we added three inches seam allowance to the shirt so that means one and a half inches for both sides of the shirt so i'm going to be showing you how we are going to be stitching so this is how it is going to go like you don't need to curve it straighten your sleeve like this straight your sleeve like this and then join from the one inch seam allowance on this i mean on the sleeve down to the um to the stopped area for the side slits i don't know if you understand what i'm saying but look at what i'm doing you understand what i'm saying so i did same for both sides of my shirt and then now i'm turning it to the right side of the shirt hello new viewer if not you're subscribed to the channel please consider clicking on the subscribe button like this video if you haven't liked it yet share this video and leave a comment on any part of the video they understand or anything that concerns you on this channel so guys i'm just measuring to see the accuracy of the um shirt circumference so this is how your shirt is so far this is how our shirt turned out so far so guys i'll go ahead and then flat iron it to make it neat before we fold in the side slit so guys i'll go ahead and then turn my shirt this way i'll turn my shirt this way and then fold in half inch on all the side slits and then flat iron it So guys, this is how you are going to be stitching it now. You go straight, curve this way, and then come down. We are going to do the same for the other side of the slit opening as well. So this is how it came out after we've, we've stitched down the sleeve. I'm sorry, the side slit. Now the, for the hemming of the shirt, remember the sh full length of the shirt is 30 inches. We added 2 inches hem allowance to it so that's what we are making the foldings so i first of all folded folded in half inch like so and then i'll go ahead and fold in one and half or better still you can go in first to a quarter of an inch and then fold in again like this one quarter of an inch so that's exactly what i'm doing i'll do same for the front part of the shirt as well and then take it to the same machine and then stitch it down. Hi guys, so I'm reminding you to subscribe if you're not yet subscribed to the channel. Please like the video if you like the tutorial. Leave a comment in the comment section if you like the video or you understood the tutorial or you didn't understand the tutorial. Leave a comment in the comment section so that I'll be able to help you out. Share this video to your friends and family. So after folding in, I'll take it to the same machine and then stitch it down. So guys, our shirt is ready okay so this is how it came out thank you for watching stay tuned for more videos subscribe like my pages on instagram at anella creations and facebook anella creations bye